How can smart people, how can they believe in the talking snake and people lived to 900 years old and the virgin birth? And, you know, that's, that's my question. Now look, if I told you, if you kissed a frog, it would turn to a prince. How many of you ladies got your husband by kissing a frog? Come on now, let me see. Only two, okay. <laughs> Doesn't happen very often. But in the textbooks it does. Yes, boys and girls, we started like an amoeba. And we slowly evolved to a frog. There he is, Grandpa. And then very slowly evolved to a prince. It's the same, same fairy tale. Frog turns to prince. But see, instead of a kiss, no, they got a new magic ingredient. If the frog turns to the prince quickly, we all know it's a fairy tale. But if the frog turns to the prince slowly, that's modern science. <laughs> it's the same fairy tale, folks, but they have a new magic ingredient. The new ingredient to turn the frog to a prince is billions and billions of years. How many have ever heard that expression before? Billions of years ago. It's on TV. It's on Carol Pagan's. Sagan's uh, show, Cosmos, billions and billions of years ago. It's in the magazines. It's a national pornographic, I'm mean, geographic. You know, billions and billions of years ago. Here's a fourth grade textbook. Millions of years ago. Now, kids, listen. If anybody ever says, millions of years ago, just say, uh, excuse me, were you there? <laughs> They'll say, well, no, of course I wasn't there. And you can say, now, teacher, do you know the earth is millions of years old? I mean, is this really part of science? Is this something we can observe and study and test and demonstrate in the laboratory? Or is this just something people believe? They're going to say, well, everybody believes the earth is millions of years old. <laughs> no, they don't. Most Americans think the earth is less than 10,000 years old and God made it. Only 4% are atheistic. I think that 4% ought to go start themselves a private school and teach evolution to anybody that wants to pay and come learn it. And they ought to get it out of our public schools. That's my unbiased opinion. Yeah. But uh, you, must be, you must be jumping up and down, because this is what you've devoted your life to, evolutionary biology, and here they found this new species from 4.4 million years ago. How is that possible if the Earth is only 10,000 years old? <laughs> <laughs> it's called Ardipithecus ramidus. It's about 4.4 billion years ago, and as you million. say... Bi billion. What did I say? Billion. It's... Million. It's 4.4 million or billion? Million. Million, yes. I, isn't that what I said? I hope so. <laughs> I was testing Okay. You. It's interesting to see the inflation of the age of the earth. See, in 1770, <clears throat> they said the earth was 70,000 years old. By 1902, it was 2 billion years old. 1969, it was 3.5 billion years old. Today, it's 4.6. Did you know the earth is getting older at the rate of 21 million years per year? <laughs> That's 40 years per minute. Okay, it's aging rapidly, folks. Anyway. 4.4 million years, uh, which is a bit older than Lucy, about um, 3 million years. Right. Which was if Lucy is a slightly more complete um, fossil. It's kind of getting on towards the common ancestor with chimpanzees, which lived about 6 or 7 million years ago. So it's not the common ancestor. It's too recent for that. But the, the, the uh, Darwin deniers always say we don't have enough intermediary species in the fossil history. Does this, well, does this help that? Of course. I mean, that was true when Darwin himself lived. There weren't any. Um, <laughs> oh. but, um, and they still say, show us the missing link. Where's your missing link? And um, there are quite a few of them now. And uh, right. Ardipithecus is just one of a great troop of them which have, which have been found. So uh, explain this to me. I mean, we all uh, evolved and we all have the same brain basically now. So how can some of us believe in this, not believe in, we shouldn't say that because we don't believe in this, it's the truth. We studied this and it's scientific evidence. But how can some people feel this way about it? And then there are at least half of America who thinks the world was created by a man in a cloud in six days who yeah. then needed to yeah. rest. I love that. <laughs> he's so powerful he can create the universe, but then he's pooped. I mean, how, how can we have the same brain? I'm sorry to say we don't have the same brain. I mean, there's, there's a don't. great variation. One of the main principles of the Darwinian theory is plenty of variation for natural selection to work on. And there's, sure enough, very, plenty of variation in brain power. <laughs> all, the way, all the way from... Einstein on the one hand to Sarah Palin at the other.
Okay, so um, I would say this. Any theory on the origin of life on the Earth or any other planet as far as that's concerned is a fairy tale. A fairy tale, pure and simple. Life from non-life, apart from God's direct intervention, is a fairy tale. But despite that obvious truth, evolutionists continue to build their supposedly scientific case on a foundation that virtually rules out everything that follows after it. Evolution teaches that energy, such as lightning or heat, plus matter, can occasionally create new life. Yet our entire food industry rests on the fact that this can never happen. If we examine a jar of peanut butter, it contains matter and is exposed to light and heat. But we never find new life inside unless an outside life contaminates it. If the theory of evolution was viable, then I should, occasionally, by subjecting this to energy, end up having new life. Now we go down to the store, and um, if, if I open this jar of peanut butter, maybe not often, but on some occasion, I should find new life inside. And so, when we open the jar of peanut butter, we look in there, there's no new life. And, I, and, and aren't you glad, okay? Now, um, you may smile at this, but hopefully you'll never forget it, because you and I conduct, uh, collectively, over a billion experiments every year, and we've done that for virtually a hundred years, and we never encounter new life. In fact, the entire food industry of the world depends on the fact that evolution doesn't happen. America, you come here to, you know, plug your book, and I hope you like our country, but we are a dumber country with this kind of stuff. <laughs> But I understand that Europe is getting more like America in this way. Poles show. The po it? Polish people? <laughs> <laughs> Gallup poll or equivalent I see. shows okay. that 18% of the British people think it takes one month for the Earth to orbit the sun. Get that? <laughs> and it take, and 28% uh, of the British people think that humans walked with dinosaurs. 28% of the British people get their science from the Flintstones, in other words. <laughs> <laughs> Romans okay. chapter 1, verse 18 says this, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men mm -hmm. who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Another version says they suppress the truth in unrighteousness. In order to suppress the truth, you have to have the truth. Right. So they know God exists. Right. But they are suppressing that truth. You remember the passage in Psalms chapter 14, verse 1, where the Bible says, The brilliant mathematician has said in his heart, There is no God. Right. Wait a minute. No. The amazing atheist has said in his heart, There is no God. <laughs> yeah. No, it wasn't it. The scholarly scientist. No, no. It's, it's the fool that has said in his heart, There, is, there no. is no God. That's right. To argue against the existence of God, the Bible says, is reduced to foolishness. That passage goes on in verses 19, 20, 21, and 22, 22 to say, in verse 20, for the invisible things of him are clearly seen from the creation of the world, are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made even as eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. That's right. And then verse 22, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Yeah. To argue against the yeah. existence of God is mm. foolishness. It yeah. really is. Well, Richard Dawkins said, it's absolutely safe to say if you meet someone who claims not to believe in evolution, that person is ignorant, stupid, or insane, or wicked. Sounds like he's open for a discussion. Jesus said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. You don't have to lay your brain at the door when you go study God's Word. You just bring it along. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Look, the most reasonable thing is to believe God created this world. That is extremely reasonable. It's logical and intelligent to believe in a creator and in a young earth creation. When I went to England, we tried everything to get to debate Richard Dawkins. He refused. He hung up on my secretary. I, his secretary hung up on me when, when I called back. Can you give an example of 
a genetic mutation or, 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 or an evolutionary process which ha can be seen to increase the information in the genome? Can you just stop while I think? I'm recording. Okay. I'm thinking that Darwin has said we're descended from them. Well, we're not. We're not descended from, from modern fish. We're not descended from modern monkeys. We're not descended from modern apes. They are modern animals just as we are. They are our cousins. They are not our ancestors. They are modern animals just as we are. They are modern animals just as we are. They are our cousins. They are not our ancestors. You would have to have help to be that dumb. You could not do it on your own. You'd have to have years of training and conditioning to believe such a silly idea. Sure, let's hear your new theory, Kent Hovind. What is the theory you have to offer to replace the scientific theory of evolution? The answer is no theory. There is no theory. No, I've got a very the reason point. it's not taught, all she would do is say, God did it. Okay, get a computer program, any computer program, make a copy it onto a disk then copy it to another disk, then copy it to another disk. Do that a thousand times, see if it'll still run. That's the DNA code that we have, folks. It's incredibly complex. I think the only reason anybody would say this happened by chance and there was no designer is because they don't want to find that designer. The atheist can't find God for the same reason a thief can't find a policeman. At this moment, God commands all men to repent and believe that today is the day of salvation, that you are to flee from the wrath to come, to flee from the law of Moses that condemns you into the city of refuge who is Jesus Christ our Lord. Run to Him. Repentance is simply giving up to stop fighting against God and to stop attempting to gain your own salvation through your own works, to literally give up and fall upon Christ. That is salvation. So that you say, nothing in my hands I bring, simply to the cross I cling. And when that seed grows in you to the point where you know that you're standing before God is 100 absolutely percent based and founded upon the perfect work and merit of Jesus Christ, then you stand before Him with confidence, knowing that all your sins have been atoned for and that you are righteous in Christ. Come to Him. If you're not sure you're going to heaven, why don't you ask the Lord to save you? It really is that simple. Just pray with me right now. Just say, Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I've broken your laws, and I'm sorry. Lord, I believe you died for me. Would you please forgive my sin and save me right now? Amen. Well, friend, if you just ask the Lord to come in your heart and save you, the Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You've got God's promise you're going to heaven. What you need to do is write this date and the time down in the front of your Bible someplace because the devil will certainly try to make you doubt that you're going to heaven. And you need to start reading your Bible. You need to start going to a good church that believes the Bible and start learning what this book says. And read God's Word. As a newborn babe, you need to grow by desiring the sincere milk of the Word. The more you read this book, the more you grow to be a good Christian. Call us and let us know or write us a letter. We'd be glad to rejoice with you and give you some information to help you grow closer to the Lord in your new life. If we can be any help, don't hesitate to call. Thank you so much.